This video is sponsored by The Ridge. Get 10% off your order and free worldwide shipping by going to ridge.com slash nameexplain and by using the code nameexplain. Now, here's a pretty random picture. It's a picture of, as you can tell, Le Horrible Sonnets, which translates to The Horrible CERN Girls. They were a comedy group founded by employees of the European research organization CERN. Now, you may be thinking, what have these women got to do with the rest of this video? Well, while CERN may now be known for their Large Hadron Collider, it was also the birthplace of the thing you're looking at right now, the World Wide Web. In 1992, Le Horrible Sonnets were preparing to get on stage for one of their concerts. Before they went on stage however their manager Silvano Di Gennaro took a quick photo of them with the intention of it being used as the front cover of their upcoming album. A young Tim Berners-Lee asked Gennaro if he had a photo he could use to test out uploading it to his recently updated web. The band's manager was confused by first. Gennaro has spoken on the event. He said the web back in 92 and 93 was exclusively used by physicists. I was like why do you want to put the surnets on that? It's only text. Nevertheless, Berners-Lee got his way and after a quick edit in the first ever version of Photoshop, the photo was uploaded to a page about musical acts at CERN. So why am I starting things with this random picture of a comedy band from the 90s? Well, it's because this strange image is actually the first ever image posted to the web. The CERN has paved the way for millions of not just photos, but documents, videos, audio, and all kinds of things being uploaded to the internet. If it weren't for these girls, schmucks like myself wouldn't be here uploading videos to the internet. In fact, quick side note, we should should explain the difference between the internet and World Wide Web, as I myself just used the term internet when I meant to say World Wide Web. The World Wide Web is this thing, a series of web pages that are connected via links and addresses, which spans worldwide, hence why it's the World Wide Web. The internet is the network of networks that power the World Wide Web. It can be seen as the infrastructure behind it, as the internet can be used for more than just accessing the World Wide Web. This can be used for things like playing video games together or video calling someone. The name internet itself is a combination of the prefix inter and the word network network, as it's an interconnected series of networks. These things that litter the web and our computers like photos, videos and documents are collectively called files. Obviously this word didn't come into existence thanks to computers. Files existed way before computers as a thing we store documents in. This word roots back to the Latin phylum, which means thread slash string, which might seem weird at first as real life files aren't made of thread or string. However, files can also be a verb, in which it means to organise something, and files etymology links more to the word being used as a verb, because if you file things, it means you string slash thread them together. I mean, some files actually have a bit of string on them to tie them together. While that might be how real life files got their name, why are these collections of ones and twos on our screens also known as files? Honestly, I'm so used to calling these files that when I hear the word file, I think of things on computers as opposed to actual real life files. Well, that might just be me because I'm a massive nerd. Also, it's kind of weird that they're called files too, as a computer file tends to be a single thing, e.g. a single song or single photo, while a real life file is a collection of things, e.g. a collection of paper documents. Wouldn't it make more sense if a collection of songs or pictures or whatever on a computer were called a file? How they aren't, a collection of these things is called a folder on a computer. So on a computer you have a folder full of files, which is just a bit odd if you think about it literally. However, I've read that a computer file is defined as a collection of data treated as a single unit. So I guess yes, a computer file is a collection of things, much like a real file, however they're treated as a single thing. It seems that the reason computer files were named after real life files is because, like with real files, they're used to store information. In the early days of computing, these files were somewhat more literal. In 1950, an advertisement in popular science magazines from RCA showed off a memory vacuum tube, which could store information on it, or as they put it, keep answers on file. The term can also date back later to the 1940s, with files for computers being kept on punch cards. I'm always surprised at how far back computing actually goes. We tend to think of it as a fairly modern thing, but here are people talking about computers in the first half of the 20th century. These computer files are made up of things called bit. It's believed that bit in this way derives from an abbreviation of binary digit, specifically the first two letters of binary and the last two letters of digit. However, bits are seriously tiny things, so it's very rare we are dealing with a file so small that its size is in bits. More often you'll hear the term byte to measure the size of a computer file, with a byte being formed of 8 bits. And yes, this does relate to the concept of 8-bit games. Where byte comes from, however, isn't as known. It seems to have been coined in the 1960s, and it's possibly 
a play on bits. Bits and bytes just sounds nice. While I've also read that it's from an abbreviation once again, like how bit was coined, this time being an abbreviation of binary digit 8, with taking the by at the start of binary, the t at the end of digit, and the e at the start of 8, and the i was swapped out of a y to help prevent confusion. It sounds a bit far-fetched to me, but hey, it has to come from somewhere, right? My favourite idea, however, for bytes etymology comes from the idea that it relates to biting something, as taking a byte out of something is taking a chunk out of it, and a computer byte is a chunk of a full computer file. Bytes can also come together to form larger units, in the same way that grams can become a kilogram and milliliters can become liters. Each larger version of a byte is formed of 1024 of the byte that came before it, e.g. 1024 bytes become a kilobyte, 1024 kilobytes become a megabyte, 1024 megabytes become a gigabyte, 1024 gigabytes become a terabyte, and so on to reach the largest form of byte we have so far, a yottabyte. More like a lot of byte, am I right? No? No, no one? Okay, I'll carry on. Of course, these byte prefixes come from language terms we see in other places. The kilo or kilobyte means 1000, mega is simply a term that means big, giga means billion, and tera means trillion. I would go through the rest of them, but I'm sure you're seeing a pattern here. Anyway, while we've established why files are called files and why bits and bytes are called bits and bytes, this isn't really what we're here for. Take files that are photos, they aren't all simply labelled as picture files, or video files aren't all simply labelled as video files. Files come in a variety of formats. There are multiple different formats of picture files, of audio files, of video files, you get the idea. And of course all these file formats have names. And believe me, there are way more file formats than I ever thought there was. Wikipedia have a list of file formats and it's just a tiny bit daunting. So we won't be covering them all here. So soz.drw files, you'll have to wait for the sequel to this video, that will actually never happen. Though away from our DRWs and our SKPs, yes they are real file formats according to Wikipedia's list, we have a selection of file types that really are the cream of the crop. These are file formats that have become commonplace, seemingly known by everyone. Though maybe that's just me thinking they're known by everyone as I sit in a computer in my basement all day, so these file names come up often. Maybe your average person doesn't know their JPEGs from their PDFs. Let me know if you are in fact that average person and I'm just being a big nerd. Though this leads us on to our main question, words like JPEG, MP3 and PDF have seemingly become commonplace in language now. We use them in the workplace and in everyday language. Yet I don't know how many people who use these seemingly random random jumble of letters and numbers know what they actually mean and where they originate from. Well, I certainly don't anyway. So today, let's look at what these file format names mean and find out where they came from. First, let's look into JPEG, which is a popular file format for images. I've read it's the format digital cameras tend to use, and while it's popular, it has drawbacks, such as the pictures losing quality somewhat easily, and you can't add transparency to them. JPEG is of course an acronym, which I imagine a lot of these will be, for Joint Photographic Experts Group, with this group being the committee of people who standardise the coding of still images on the internet. Of course, they created the JPEG file type back in 1992, and while they have gone on to create newer versions like the JPEG X or the JPEG 2000, the good old OG JPEG has stayed the most popular. As mentioned, the JPEG image format has some drawbacks. So in 1994, not only was this handsome individual created, but so was a new image file format, the PNG, which I just read is also called a ping, which trust me, isn't the only instance of people not agreeing on what to call a file format we'll be dealing with today. PNG stands for Portable Network Graphics, but why it stands for this, I couldn't find out. One idea I read is that PNG actually stands for PNG is not GIF as it was made to be a newer version of GIF. This explains why some call it PING, which includes the I of this recursive acronym, a recursive acronym being an acronym that refers to itself. However, it doesn't explain to us what actually means portable network graphic. Unlike JPEG or PNG, EXE is a file format that's name isn't an acronym. It's actually a shortening of executable, as files with the .exe format are also known as executable files. Though what does this mean exactly? Well, no, it doesn't mean that these files are sentenced to death. Execute means more than that. It it can also mean to carry out or accomplish something, as that is what these files do. EXE files aren't music or video, but they're more likely applications for your computer. Games are often EXE files, so they're called executable files, as when they're open, they carry out or execute what they were programmed to do. A type of audio file is a MIDI file. In fact, MIDI is more than just a file type. It stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. If there's music being created with electronic instruments, such as synthesizers and electronic drums, then it's considered a MIDI 
song, at least I think so anyway. There's going to be some real computer buffs raging in the comment section of this video, I just know it. MIDI came into being in the 80s with the popularity of techno music, and of course video games often feature MIDI music, which were also a staple of the 80s. Of course, however, the most popular of all the audio file formats in this day and age goes to the MP3. Forgive me for sounding like an old man, but I remember when MP3 players first became a thing. It seemed like people immediately knew that MP3 equaled music, like they weren't called digital music players or anything like that. The MP3 part was the front and centre of the branding in them. Then music streaming came along and boom, MP3s became outdated as quickly as they became relevant. Though I still regularly toy with MP3, so to me they never went away. This audio you're hearing right now may very well be an MP3. In all honesty, I, I, I can't remember what format I record in. MP3 is a shortening of MPEG Audio Layer 3, which as you can see contains another acronym unto itself. MPEG sounds like JPEG as they are very similar. MPEG means Moving Picture Expert Group, and like JPEG, they are an organisation who helps standardise digital things, except MPEG work with audio and video as opposed to still images like JPEG do. And of course, MPEG invented the MP3. Though the MP3 wasn't their first attempt, and you can see this from its name, the MP3 was the third iteration of their file type. Yes, there was an MP1 and an MP2 before it, but both of those are now considered somewhat outdated. MPEG have even gone beyond the MP3 and created the MP4, which not only emits audio but video too. This video in fact is an MP4. I checked to see if there was an MP5, but guns came up so I got scared and clicked away. Other popular video formats however include AVI, which was created by Microsoft and stands for Audio Video Interleave, and MKV, which stands for Matroska Video. This word of Matroska derives from the Russian name for stacking dolls, as these files can store things within them like the dolls. I feel like we ought to mention here the file formats of the Microsoft Office suite of programs, Word, PowerPoint and Excel, or as I like to call them, the holy trinity of last minute homework. I remember many a late night half assing a PowerPoint together for the next day. They aren't the most exciting names, a Word document is .doc as it's a shortening of document, a PowerPoint file is .ppt as it's a shortening of PowerPoint, and an Excel spreadsheet is .xls as it's a shortening of Excel. Like I said, they aren't that interesting, but I feel like they have to be covered because of how popular they are. Though I also read these file types aren't actually used anymore. I haven't used Office in ages, so if someone could fill me in, that would be great. Apple Pages and Google Docs till I die. However, one of the most popular document formats does have a rather interesting name, PDF. Like MP3, PDF seems to be one of those terms that have really hit the mainstream. I think most people know what a PDF is. It was created by Adobe in 1992 and simply means portable document format. As well, that's exactly what a PDF is. It's a format for documents that is portable, I guess. Finally, I want to talk about what I feel is the most popular file type, the GIF. These moving, looping images have become not only a mainstay of social media, most social media have a GIF button baked into them, but language as a whole. You see so often people responding to tweets or messages solely with GIFs expressing their feelings and reactions. Honestly, I think you can have an entire conversation with just GIFs. It's amazing where GIFs can come from too. More often than not, they're just clips from TV shows or movies taken out of context. I'm watching Parks and Recreation at the moment, and the amount of times I've seen a scene and thought to myself, oh, that's where that GIF comes from, is staggering. That show is highly gifable. Anyway, this isn't just me rambling on about GIFs. Despite how popular they have become for communicating in recent years, GIFs are actually over 30 years old. First being created in 1987 by a computer scientist named Steve Wilhite. It simply stands for Graphics Interchange Format. However, what's interesting about the name GIF isn't its origins, but rather how you say it. There's this online argument over whether it should be pronounced GIF with a hard G or GIF with a soft G. I'm sure you can tell from this video that I'm in Camp Hard G. However, the aforementioned creator of the GIF, Steve Wilhit, has openly said he intended on being pronounced as GIF, so it would appear that I'm actually mispronouncing the name, but in all honesty, I'm not too fast. Let's face it, it wouldn't be the first time I've ever mispronounced the name. So what side of the argument are you on? GIF or GIF? A name I feel way more confident in pronouncing, however, is The Ridge, the fine creators of wallets, backpacks, and a variety of other goods who have very kindly sponsored today's video. They make everyday products at a quality you definitely don't see every day, with their most popular product being The Ridge Wallet. I've always been a fan of small wallets, but this wallet takes small wallets to the next level. Its sleek metal design is like any wallet I've ever seen, and it fits into any pocket without making a really annoying bulge. The Ridge Wallet launched on Kickstarter in 2013, and is now in the pockets of half a million people. 
However, it's more than wallets they make. They do mobile phone accessories too, and the Ridge were kind enough to send me over one of their free meter lightning cables. Pretty much all of Name Explains created on some kind of Apple product, so I work through lightning cables quickly. However, the Ridge's lightning cable is made of braided nylon for extra protection and is 5000 plus bed test approved, so this lightning cable won't break on me anytime soon. It even has a rubber strap so I can bundle it up neatly. Seriously, why don't more companies do this? It also comes in micro USB and Type C for whatever device you have. If you want one of the Ridge's awesome wallets, cables, or one of the many other things they make, then visit ridge.com slash nameexplain and use the code nameexplain, which will all be linked down below, for 10% off your order. So why don't you find your next favourite wallet right now by visiting ridge.com slash nameexplain and by using the promo code nameexplain. Thank you once again to the Ridge for sponsoring this video. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Name Explain depends on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just a small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explain extras, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Stick around and check out another video and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Name Explain. You can follow myself on Twitter at NameExplainYT. Follow me there and tweet the name Bill at me so I know you came from this message. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again thank you all so much.